Hey everybody, welcome back to the Reclamation Podcast. Our goal is to help you reclaim good practices for following Jesus. If we haven't met yet, my name is Tony and I'm your host with over a decade in the local church. I just, uh, I want to help you connect intentionally, purposefully to the season of life you're in to Jesus. So we do that every single week through uh, interview episodes and through these monologue episodes where I share some of the things that God is doing on my heart. So today we're going to talk about the change of seasons. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but man, Christmas came early and fast. Like it was like one minute we were in Halloween and the next minute everybody was putting up Christmas trees. And look, I don't really care if you have a Christmas tree up. I don't really care if you listen to Christmas music all the time, but I was just really surprised on how fast everything changed, like blink of an eye fast. And and it really got me thinking about the tension of changing seasons, right? So if we think about this kind of uh, from a macro perspective, we know that seasons always change. The season you're in now will not be the season that you're in forever. And the season you're in next won't be the season that you're in forever. Seasons are always changing and there's always tension in change. You know, when we think about summer that has a whole different feel than fall, fall, whole different feel than winter, winter, whole different feel than spring, right? And then back into summer, right? Like there's always a different feel. Each one has a different pull on your life. Each one has a a different uh, rhythm. In my line of work, summer is much more restful than fall or winter. As a matter of fact, for most pastors, this is the busiest season. Prepping for Christmas and then going straight to Easter and all the programming that happens in the fall and the spring, this is when people want to receive what the church has to offer uh, theologically or or, or programs, um, even though we know that disciple making is more than programs. And so a lot of my colleagues and even myself in different seasons We struggle with the tension in the season. And I I bet you do too. I bet you that there are are times in your life where you're like, I just need to make it through the end of this football season, baseball season, band season, or work season. And yet, when we leave one season and enter the next, we are often found ourselves in a difficult situation. Why is it difficult? Well, the first reason that it's difficult is because we... We try to take all the things from the past season and bring it into the new season. I mean, think about how many things that you keep on your calendar because they were on your calendar before, but they they shouldn't be on your calendar anymore. We should stop them. We should end. Right? But if, if you're like most of us, when we go from one season to the next, we just add more to the plate. Oh, there's plenty of room. Oh, here we go. So the, one of the reasons that there's tension in season change is because we try to take what was meant for the last season and bring it into the new season. The second reason that there's uh, a tension in season change is because of what it does to our schedules. You know, we, we can all admit that people are rhythmic. When we do our best, we've got a, a rhythm, a work rhythm, a life rhythm, a moving kids around rhythm. My wife and I really do our best work when we're synchronized in our rhythms. We're talking about what we're doing and what we're su- supposed to have done already. Now, I'm very intentional in the fact that I use the word tension because I want you to think about tension a lot like a rubber band. If you take one end of the rubber band and I take the other and we begin to pull, we create tension on the rubber band. Now, that rubber band is representative of the relationships in our lives. And there's only two ways to relieve tension in the relationships that you have right now. The first one is to let go completely. Just let go. Or the second one, is to walk towards the other side. Walk towards the tension. Walk towards the pain. Walk towards the hurt. Walk towards all of that so that, that you can move closer and closer and have less tension, right? If, if you feel stretched out, walk towards the thing that's stretching you. It's counterintuitive because if you're anything like me, you want to run away from the, the pain point. But the truth is we're designed to walk towards it. For most people, letting go completely is not even a real option. You can't let go of your children's responsibilities. 
You can't let go of your work. You can't let go of the the Christmas season without major, major repercussions. So I want to talk about what it does it look like to walk towards the tension in your life? What does it look like to walk towards the tension in your life? And, and the first thing I want to suggest to you is to walk towards the tension is to increase your time in prayer. Increase your time in prayer. First Thessalonians reminds us to pray without ceasing. And what I've learned is, is that if I can carve out five minutes for prayer, five extra minutes on top of whatever else I was doing, then I'm really going to serve the tension well. If you want to walk towards the tension, begin in prayer. Prayer is the best way to gain perspective. You know, whether you physically get on your knees or not, when you lower yourself, when you humble yourself to a position of prayer, you're going to change your outlook on life. So car- if you want to if you want to give yourself more time in this new season, start by carving out more time for prayer. All right, second thing, right? The second thing I try to do is, is talk about the tension with the inner circle. You've heard me say it before. If you listen to this podcast regularly, then you know that I, I believe strongly following Jesus is a team sport. We're not meant to follow Jesus alone. You need a circle. You're not the Lone Ranger. Right? I, I happen to call mine the counsel of the godly. Right, The men and women in my life who get the opportunity to speak into my crisis moments, the tension moments. I'm telling you that if you want to relieve tension, talk to the people who are in your inner circle. Those people have wisdom for you. And, and Jesus designed us, the Lord designed us to follow Jesus like a team sport. Think about it like this. If tension is something that we have to carry when we talk to our inner circle about it, then they help us carry the burden. So there are people in your life who can help carry the tension that you're currently facing. You do not have to do it alone. As a matter of fact, we make bad decisions when we're by ourselves. Amen? I I know you agree with me on this because oftentimes I I hear from many of you that... um, we're out there making bad decisions, not following Jesus the way that we really want to. So the first thing, pray. The second thing, talk to your inner circle, right? Following Jesus is a team sport. If you want to relieve the tension, talk to the circle. The third one is the most practical, right? It's the, the least theological, most practical, but it's a, it's a gift that you can really give yourself. And that is this, uh, Give yourself a calendar evaluation. Somebody write that down. Calendar evaluation. It's when you look through your calendar and decide what needs to go. Because if you're leaving one season and entering the next, I'm telling you right now, something needs to go. You know, there's a sense of immediacy when we follow Jesus. Jesus tells us to come follow him. Drop your nets immediately. When the Holy Spirit fell at Pentecost, they immediately began to go preach. We serve a God whose timing is perfect. And sometimes he calls us even when it feels like we have a lot of other things to do. But yet the Lord is calling you and there's a sense of immediacy with that. So if you want to relieve the tension in your life, maybe one of the things that you could do is to decide to uh, decide to make sure that you have... Um, the ability to to get rid of some things. Like, let's just get rid of them. Cut them out. Say goodbye. Transition yourself out. Free yourself up. Oftentimes, we stop ourselves from, from saying yes to what God's calling us to because of things that were, are, are already old things. We got to let go if we want to step forward to what God has next. So when we talk about tension in your life, those are three hopefully understandable and practical ways to relieve that tension. Prayer, right? Change your perspective. Talk to your inner circle and do a calendar evaluation. Prayer, inner circle, calendar evaluation. Now, let's also be really honest about this. If you do those three things, it's not going to be easier to say no you're just going to have a clear path. 
right? You still have to do the work of actually praying, of actually talking to the people and actually taking things off your calendar. And even then, sometimes it's hard because life is hard. God is good, but life is hard. Those things are not exclusive. God's goodness is not uh, measured by how hard or easy life is. It's measured by who God is. And his goodness is amazing. So, as we leave the very short fall season and head into what seems to be coming the longer and longer Christmas winter season, let me just remind you, you're going to have some tension. Tension is okay. Tension is a part of life. But you don't have to live in the tension forever. So, pray. Talk to your people. Evaluate your calendar and give things up. Walk towards the tension and see the goodness of God. Guys, I'm so thankful for each and every one of you for the opportunity to connect. If this episode was helpful for you in any way, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, share this episode with a friend. It goes a long way and telling the story about what God is doing on this platform. Happy Thanksgiving. No Thursday episode. Uh, Thanksgiving week as I will be eating as much turkey as possible. I'm watching football with the family. So happy Thanksgiving from my family to yours. And remember, guys, if you want to follow Jesus, you must be willing to move.